Holding the esteemed position of a guild navigator within the Spacing Guild symbolized the ultimate achievement for numerous guild members. These highly evolved humans underwent radical transformations due to the ingestion and exposure to vast amounts of the spice melange. Such alterations endowed navigators with the ability to employ a specially developed form of foresight, enabling them to guide vast starships known as Highliners across the vastness of interstellar and galactic spaces safely. Guild navigators achieved their prescient powers not merely by consuming substantial amounts of spice, but also through their constant submersion in dense spice gas clouds contained within expansive tanks. This intense and prolonged contact with spice gas led to the degeneration and mutation of their physical forms, causing their bodies to deteriorate and their limbs to lengthen over time. The earliest visible manifestation of the spice's effect on their metabolism is evident in their eyes, which the substance colors a deep shade of blue, a condition referred to as blue in blue or the eyes of Ebad. This intense blue, almost black hue, marks a common physiological response among those addicted to the spice. Within the 1965 classic Dune, Duke Leto Atreides' remarks on the guild's deep-seated protectiveness over its privacy and monopoly, highlighting that even its own agents have never laid eyes on a navigator. His son, Paul, speculates on the extent of their mutation, questioning whether they still retain any human semblance. The unveiling of a navigator occurs in Dune Messiah's opening chapter 1969, where the guild navigator Edric, resembling a humanoid fish, is depicted within his spice gas container as a stretched, slightly human form with fin-like feet and expansive fan-like hands akin to a fish navigating unfamiliar waters. The text from Heretics of Dune 1984 acknowledges the stretched and displaced limbs and organs of navigators. Chapter House. Dune, penned in 1985, reveals Lucilla's observations that navigators are perpetually immersed in the orange spice gas mist, blurring their features, endowed with a minuscule mouth and a grotesque nose, making these features seem diminutive against their large throbbing heads. It's mentioned too that their altered voices necessitate the use of translation devices rendering the navigator's song-like vocalizations into the detached tones of Galak through mechanical translation. An unpublished segment from Dune Messiah, later released in The Road to Dune 2005, describes Edric managing to survive after his spice gas tank is compromised, albeit with his prescient powers rendered nearly ineffective without the gas. In the 1984 adaptation of Dune by David Lynch, the transformation of the navigator encompasses the whole body, presenting third-stage navigators as colossal entities akin to whales or slugs, featuring profoundly distorted heads. These beings are characterized by a V-shaped oral cavity and rudimentary limbs encased within vast containers filled with orange spice gas. Notably, these versions lack the spice-induced blue-in-blue eye coloration. The film suggests that navigators themselves are responsible for the folding of space, as opposed to the propulsion systems of the Highliners. Frank Herbert was said to appreciate this nuanced portrayal of navigators' evolutionary stages, incorporating the concept into subsequent novels. In the miniseries from 2000 and the following Children of Dune series, navigators are depicted in a manner closely aligning with their portrayal in Dune Messiah, bearing resemblance to partially humanoid manta rays. Guild agents in these adaptations are depicted as hairless men in draping garments and tall hats, frequently seen with arms folded or hands joined, hinting at their transitional phase toward becoming navigators. The 2021 movie presents guild envoys with a human shape, yet their appearances are veiled by elaborate white garments and a non-transparent spherical helmet showcasing an orange-tinted visor. These figures are probably not navigators, given that Tufir Hawad's expense projections specifically account for three navigators, whereas the film features a greater number of these cloaked characters. Within the Spacing Guild, guild navigators played a crucial role in navigating spacefaring vessels through the complex web of gravitational fields that exist between starting points and their destinations, whether planetary or in space.
This capability was derived from their precognitive powers, a direct result of their extensive exposure to the spice melange. Navigators would consume the spice in two forms, inhaling its concentrated gas or ingesting pills, enabling them to perceive vast expanses of space and significantly glimpses into the future. Despite the advancements in spacefolding travel facilitated by the Holtzman effect, which carries a risk of losing one ship in every ten voyages, the acute perception of navigators allowed them to chart secure paths across the cosmos by foreseeing and avoiding perilous routes through their precognition. Following the Butlerian Jihad, which saw the elimination of thinking machines in an effort to prevent the creation of machines that mimic the human mind, guild navigators replaced traditional navigational computers. Humanity now depended on the precognitive abilities of navigators to ensure safe travel through space. In terms of their precognitive skills, guild navigators had the capacity to perceive subtle elements of Paul Atreides' overarching plans, viewing Paul as a potential threat to their dominance and the universal equilibrium. Their response to this threat was marked by intense activity, including the panic acquisition of spice and the reduction of rates for one-way troop transport to Arrakis to unprecedented lows. One guild navigator was notably involved in a plot to eliminate Paul Atreides 12 years into his reign as emperor, serving primarily to conceal the plot from Paul and others with precognitive abilities through his own. In the 1969 sequel to Dune, Dune Messiah, the figure Edric emerges as a key player in a conspiracy aimed at Emperor Paul Atreides, alongside other plotters including the Bene Gesserit, Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohiam, the Tleilaxu face dancer Saitale, and Princess Irulan of House Carino, Paul's disenchanted spouse. Edric's role was pivotal in shielding the plot from Paul's clairvoyant capabilities, as Edric's own foresight abilities cloaked the schemer's actions from other individuals with similar powers. Following the conspiracy's unraveling, both Edric and Mohiam face execution in the year 10207 AG at the behest of Paul's sister, Alia Atreides, carried out by the Freeman Naib Stilgar. In the 1985 novel, Chapter House Dune, a reference to a highly potent navigator as one of the Edrics, hints at the possibility of a cloning program or the creation of a series of golas based on Edric. David Lynch's 1984 adaptation of Dune portrays Edric, identified as a third-stage navigator, seeking an audience with Emperor Shaddam IV early in the film to inquire about the conspiracy against the Atreides family. Upon learning of the plot, Edric insists on the necessity of Paul Atreides' elimination. Departing the meeting, Edric leaves the Emperor pondering the Navigator's adamant stance on targeting the Duke's heir, a conversation overheard by Reverend Mother Mohiam, who then sets off for Caladan. Guild Navigators have significantly influenced a variety of entities and characters across the science fiction genre. Notable inspirations drawn from them can be seen in the Navigators of Warhammer 40,000, the advisors in Half-Life 2, the Aurora unit in Metroid Prime 3, Corruption, and possibly even Melfina from Outlaw Star. Additionally, their impact extends to the Cylon hybrids, who function as navigators and central processors in the reimagined Battlestar Galactica series, and the Tardigrade featured in Star Trek Discovery. So that is a complete introduction to the Guild Navigators. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you later, whippersnapper.